I don't see a circumstance where anybody can say, I'm going to f*** you up to their wife when they are trying to, like, say that they need space. That's, like, not potentially abusive. So that's a very cherry-picked quote of, I'm going to f*** you up. They obviously continued talking, and then, first of all, there's never been any physical abuse that's claimed on either side. And secondly, he let her leave. So let me let me make a little bit stronger claims now. Consistently okay. throughout this conversation, you have attributed intentions to the wife. All right. All right. Steven Crowder. Mm hmm. Okay, so what exactly is your position on that video we watched? Just clarify it as to the best of your ability. The the ring video. The yes, the ring video of them on their like patio outside. Um I think my official position on the ring video is that I think it's it's a situation where two people were in an incredibly stressful situation. One was going in for to give birth, and one was going in to have major chest surgery. And his wife flipped out, called him an abuser, drove him crazy, fled the home, and then divorced him uh, a couple months later. So I don't really want to bash either one in this situation, but I think that he is completely not abusive. What He's completely not abusive. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Uh, when, so you made a strong claim there when you said try to make him crazy. Can you, where, where did that happen? I mean, I don't, I don't think she's trying to do it on purpose, but I think this is my genuine take. People say I'm like lying. I'm not lying. I'm, I'm just saying this is what I see in that video is I see you know, I, I see her, I'm not saying she's trying to drive him crazy, but she is frustrating him because he's trusting her as his wife and she's saying, no, I'm going legal. I'm starting to call you an abuser. And she doesn't engage with the conversation. He's clearly trying to work something out. And she just says, Steven, no, I'm not doing this right now. I'll, I'm leaving okay. and I'll be back when I'm back. So when you say she's trying to go legal, to my knowledge, at the time, he isn't aware of any legal process that's happening there. There isn't... Uh, right. And, yeah. Yes, right. I'm not saying necessarily, but like, I, you know, I may as well, everybody's seen my family, so I may as well say it. I've seen this happen firsthand where a man trusts his wife, the wife gets overwhelmed, she turns on him, and then even though she doesn't really mean to do it, she starts accusing him of abuse because she feels guilty and she's projecting it onto him and saying he's trying to make her feel guilty by abusing her. I think that's what's going on there. Um... Why? Because nothing he says indicates any abuse. So, I think it can imply some kind of so. So it's weird to me because you're in one sense you're saying something I actually agree with that's rather accurate. This is incredibly stressful uh, series of circumstances. Incredibly yes. stressful. Now, I would say this is where a marriage either is the strongest or breaks up down. Absolutely. This kind of a situation. However. Right? Under, with that framework in mind, couldn't she mm -hmm. have made a mistake, maybe felt like a, a series, even if I were to agree with you, that nothing that Steven Crowder did was abusive at all. Couldn't sure. we come to a, a, a kind of agreement that mm -hmm. um, what Steven Crowder did, or sorry, uh, yeah, what Steven Crowder did, his wife might have been able to perceive as abusive in those high stakes, stressful scenarios? Honestly, she could have honestly interpreted it as abusive because like, I don't know, she's pregnant and she feels like he should be more concerned for her well-being with the stress on top of it. And so she's thinking like, hey, this is kind of abusive behavior because they, I know, I know, you know, relationships. I know relationships. Sometimes we say things, you know, sometimes we say things we don't mean. Right. And even if so, if I agree with you, nothing abusive happened. Okay. Why couldn't she have just been like. I believe this was abusive. Why is it projection? I guess you, I guess you, I guess you could say, but I don't, I don't think she thinks that he is an abusive person. I don't think she, because 
they they're both they both agreed that they're gonna have this like traditional christian marriage right yep they both agreed to it like they were abstinent before right so they're both on the same page so everything he's saying you know everything he's saying does hold up to that all he's saying is like hey i thought we agreed to do this together so could she have should could she be so could she be irrational i, I mean i i just i guess what i would say is she just heard her behavior shows a sign of like a level of immaturity that i think i don't think she thinks she he's abusive i just think she's trying to get rid of the guilt i guess that's what i'm saying so this is, is so so where you, me and you are agreeing is, is in this that stressful scenario thing we can't really interpret fully what the context of this is and so yeah in that we can agree but i don't know how from there you're getting to he was not abusive i think the most that you're going to be able to say is that we don't know whether or not either one of them is abusive potentially she could be abusive right we don't know right well you we, can look at their behavior after okay so let's just say this is a stressful scenario but it's two like we're now two years after this mm -hmm. this video right so it's no longer a stressful situation in the sense that she is in the same house as her ex-husband or yep. whatever. I don't know. I think they're divorcing right now. I'm not sure if they're quite divorced yet. And this, you know, she gave birth. So it's two years later. She's not in the same stressful situation. She's leaking videos about him trying to make him look bad. All he said, he made a statement about the divorce that was a perfectly mature statement. And he said, I wish to keep this private for the sake of the kids. Well, no, no. He made a very, no, no, no. He made a very loaded statement. If I remember his statement correctly, actually, yeah, yeah. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. His original okay. statement was that we are going through a divorce. Me and my wife are going through a divorce. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. in the state of Texas, it's a one, like, you know, one side can- No, no fault. Yeah, no fault divorce, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so she can just do it and she can say whatever and I don't need to be a part of it. And it's not my kid's fault. That's what he wanted to stress a lot. And that it was her, it was his wife's idea, not his. It was his wife mm -hmm. that was pushing it, right? Not him. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and, and he then went on to talk about how important like marriage is and stuff like that. So the painting of this is that his wife is breaking up a happy family that where he wanted to, he kept saying, I wanted to make things work. I, I didn't want to break it up because I, I think I, I think I remember him explicitly saying, I know how detrimental like a split household can be for children. Right. Um, yeah, yes, maybe, basically. but yes. either way, that's along I with his, say. yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he's saying, he's putting a lot on his wife there. He's saying like, she is breaking up a, a family that could be, you know, together could be united and could raise happy, healthy children, and she's instead choosing not to. That's a pretty tough claim, especially in conservative circles, no? Well, I understand that she feels the need to defend herself because she feels guilty for doing that, but he's he's right, I think, to say that, like, I don't think anything's loaded about that. She did file for the divorce. It was not his choice. And I do think that no-fault divorce doesn't make any sense, frankly. Well, we could talk about whether or not no fault divorce doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I feel like that's well, a I'm little. Not even... Yeah, oh, sorry, that... yeah, yeah. yeah, I feel like that's a little bit on the side. Um, but... but what about that is loaded? I mean, he's just saying what she did. She well, is breaking it up. Well, the the problem is just saying it's her. The way that that's loaded is it implies that she is breaking up something that could work, that could be healthy for her children, but instead she's like some very selfishly deciding i don't care what's good for the children i'm deciding what's good for me even though what's good like this could work right the implication is that she's you know jumping ship when the ship isn't even sinking it just needs a little bit of patchwork and then their children can live a happy life which is a pretty that's a pretty steep claim in conservatives to my knowledge like conservative people consider raising children and like happy healthy children to be like a number one number one number one priority and if you don't do that for your children you're like a failure as a parent as a person really um yeah i can see that and i do i do i do think i, I think he feels betrayed because she did agree to marriage and marriage is till death do us part and i i think it's a betrayal of that vow it is wrong to break that vow However, I don't, I don't think he's right to say that it's completely her choice because I think she obviously has psychological problems that 
potentially, I would say, impeded her from ever truly getting married in the first place, which is why they should consider annulment, which is saying that they never got married in the first place. But I don't believe uh, in div I agree with him, I don't believe in divorce. How can you break a vow? How can you choose to break a vow that you made for- Wait, you, you don't believe in divorce or no-fault divorce? Well, I don't believe in divorce at all as a concept. I don't understand. If you make a vow to be with somebody, till death do you part, how can you break that vow? Either you didn't understand what you're doing when you took the vow, or the vow is, like, forever. Otherwise, marriage means nothing. Well, can people not change? And grow apart? It says through sickness and through health. Through that, everything. Yeah, so you're saying, you, you can, but then you can become an entirely different person. You can have a life-changing, yeah. multiple life-changing experiences, some epiphanies and stuff like that. Maybe you guys could just grow apart. Well, then marriage doesn't mean anything. You have to be there with that person no matter what they go through. Other, right? I, mean, I, 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 I like, I, I like your, your argument here. I really do. Because it was, um, it was a conversation I've had in my past mm. relationships as well. Like, what does commitment really mean? How much commitment is too, too much commitment? Like, for example, my ex, um, she uh, suffered from alcoholism. And it's like... Mm -hmm. If let's say that me and her were married, do I have to see through to her getting help for her alcoholism for the rest of her life, even if she doesn't get any better? Let's say if she That's was physically abusive, right? Where does mm -hmm. the line lie for marriage? How far does it go? And that's going to be interpreted person to person, uh, I think. Well, I would say, I would say, and I think this is just natural law. I would say, of course, of course, I, I look, this is what always happens. I, this is why I, I just call myself a centrist. The left wing turns marriage into whatever, you can divorce whenever, you know, whatever. The right wing turns marriage into a jail cell. Like, you're locked in with this person forever, no matter what they do. Of course that's not reasonable. Of course. Okay, well, if, what if I you... Say, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Okay. Um, I, what I would say is, of course, if you vow to be with somebody forever, of course, you're spouse can fail in those vows but you still chose that person so you may be separated but you're you're still married you can't marry another person unless you revisit the marriage in the first place and you say D was this person actually psychologically healthy enough to get married did they understand what they were signing up for i think those are the only two options what do you think uh i i think i i disagree but i feel like we would get I feel like that would become the topic then if we were to discuss it. Like, I feel like this is a whole nother, you know, conversation to have. I feel like we see eye to eye on some of the critical points um, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and stuff like that. So I would, I'd want to keep it there and go back to Steven Crowder if we could. Okay. So I certainly am not one of those people who think that people get, I just want to say, I don't believe people go to hell for getting a divorce or whatever. It's extremely common. It's not even really a religious argument. It's just... I just think it makes sense, but whatever. Is there people who believe you go to hell for getting divorced? I didn't even uh, well, it, think of that. Well, I'm Catholic. It, it used to be considered a mortal sin, which means that you break your relationship with God, you know, and you will go to hell if you die. But I, 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 it's not considered a mortal sin anymore. And it's it's obviously not, you know, whatever. But okay. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't know that, actually. I, I genuinely didn't know that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It used to be considered like a very, very serious problem. Which is weird because I used to be Catholic and I didn't even know that. Um, but anyway. You know, you know, it's so crazy how many people I meet online who are like are lapsed Catholics or used to be mm. Catholic or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what Twitter will do to you. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I don't use Twitter because I'm not insane. All right. <laughs> I, uh, I, so when it comes to Stephen Crowder, right, and how he was acting on the video and with... Mm the woman in question, or, or his wife, he, mm -hmm. or his ex-wife, whatever. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that she acted in a way that's like uniquely inappropriate that would warrant like an annulment or anything like that or any kind of reason. Like, when we're talking about their relationship and whether or not he was abusive, how much... Like, what are you using to come to the conclusion that he wasn't? Because I'm primarily looking at a piece of footage, 
I'm looking mm -hmm. at the context surrounding that piece of footage. I'm not looking, mm -hmm. as you previously mentioned, two years later as the given thing. I'm looking at that given okay. in what those people have information of at that time, was it abusive? And I, what, the conclusion that I'm coming to, and it seems like some other people, is we just don't know. We don't have enough information. I will say, personally though, I will stake a hard claim and then this is where perhaps we can have some back and forth. I think it is mm -hmm. abusive at the end when he says like, uh, what was it? Uh, I'll fuck you up. Yeah, I'll fuck you up. I, I think that is a pretty abusive thing to say to somebody who's, um, who's expressed, uh, you know, fear for being, or sorry, not, probably shouldn't say <coughs> fear, but like, kind of like uh, emotional distress that they want to leave the situation, right? They want to mm -hmm. leave the area. Like if I was in a relationship with somebody and they're like, hey, look, I just want to go. I just want to do whatever. If mm -hmm. I say I'm going to fuck you up, I feel like that's, that's pretty hard to argue. That's not abusive, isn't it? <coughs> well, okay. I think with the whole video, you can make you can claim that two one or two one or two or both of these things are abusive. Either the content of what he's saying or the tone of which he's in which he says it. Okay. Now the content of what he's saying, I'm pretty sure some people can say like you shouldn't you shouldn't tell your wife that she should do her wifely duties. Okay, but they are traditional Christians, so I it's agree. not abusive. Yeah, that, I agree. The content of what he's saying is not abusive. Sure. Well of that okay. given statement, sure. Okay, well, he he just, he, he says things like, you know, you don't show me love through your actions. You should be, you should act in a way that's worthy of being called a wife. Yep. And I don't think that's abusive to say. No, I, I agree with you. It's not abusive to say in the context of the relationship that they both agreed to, which is a conservative marriage. I don't disagree right. with you on that. What I'm talking primarily okay. about is, number one, the like, I'll fuck you up. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the watch it, watch it thing is really right in the line. Um, okay. There's, I can theory craft a couple ways that the watch it thing could not or might not be abusive, but they are mm -hmm. rather slim compared to, like, things that would be abusive. I feel like if you're telling your partner, watch it, watch it, I feel like that's kind of like, you know, what is implied there? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I, I do understand how it looks like that. I think, okay, the watch it, watch it thing, I completely sympathize with him because this was my reasoning. If you're married to somebody and they say, you are abusing me and it's sick, you're crossing a line there where the trust is now broken because you're saying to your spouse, like, I don't trust you. I'm not, I'm calling this abuse. I'm not saying we're having a disagreement I'm calling you an abuser. And the whole video starts with him saying, I draw the line at abuse. Mm -hmm. So I think what he's saying is, you shouldn't say that unless you mean it, because you're breaking the trust in our relationship. If you call me an abuser and we're just having a disagreement, then you're saying you're going to go somewhere that you, it's crossing a line of trust in a relationship. So I, I agree that it is the, um, it is removing the ability for the other partner to have um, like a, a stupid remark. So like, for instance, if you know, I'm in a relationship with somebody and they do something that I consider to be potentially abusive and I call it abuse, what it says is that you did this maliciously or with intent. Whereas like mm -hmm. maybe they did it by mistake, maybe they did it whatever. So it is pointingly saying like, no, you did this intentionally and maliciously. It is pointing that. But your response to that should be different. And I believe also in your response to that, you can be abusive. I think, for instance, if somebody said, you're abusive, and I said, no, I'm not. And I like, for instance, absolute classic, um, block the door and prevent them from leaving the room mm. in, until I'm done. That is abusive. Mm -hmm. So you can be abusive in response to people claiming you're abusive. You know what I'm saying? And I think hey, you can you can yeah. be abusive. And of course, you could there can be codependent abusive relationships, but I just think I I guess what I would say overall is he doesn't appear to me to be like a controlling or manipulative or a malevolent person in this conversation. You could say he's frustrated, 
but he's he's not he's not really yelling at her. He he he's a, has a frustrated tone. But I just say overall, if you look at his overall demeanor, he wants to continue the conversation. He's warning her about crossing the line of trust in their relationship, but he's not trying to hurt her. And he says, he even says to me, which makes me very sympathetic towards him, he says, Hillary, you give up so easily, right? Mm -hmm. Which seems to indicate to me that he wants to, he, he's not trying to put her down. He's trying to say like, look, there's an issue, but we can work through it. Um, I think- there, I just don't see how that comes off as abusive. You could say calling her abusive, that's a stretch. Maybe. I think you could say she's abusing him without being aware of it. But to say that that is abuse from him, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Um... What do you, th what do you think about, uh... What do you think about the car? Like, uh, why they the only have one... Thing? Yeah, why they only have one car? <laughs> um... I think that's a situ- like, I don't- I don't really- like, it's a, a situation with so much context missing that we have no idea. Like, maybe there are other cars in the shop, or... I mean, maybe they've been married for nine years and they only ever wanted one car and it worked for them. But I think- I think that the situ- the context of the situation, if you include the, the fact that in that video she herself says she fled the home, then when he says you're gonna take the car and leave me here, he's not talking about a, a, like an hour's trip to the grocery store. He's saying like, you're taking the car and leaving. So I don't think it's unreasonable for him to say that. What do you mean, wait, how, how, do you, how do you know he, he's saying you're taking the car and leaving? Because the implication that I got during that conversation was that the reason why he had an issue with her taking the car is because she was taking the car for an indescript, indescript amount of time. So she said, I'll be back when I'll be back. And then he was mm -hmm. like, well, I, you know, I might have to do stuff. I might have to do whatever. And that right. was it. So what, is that what you mean when you say she's leaving? Well, I think that was a conversation where she was planning to leave for an, un, an indeterminate amount of time. Like leave, like get space from him, like leave the house. Yep. It's not about groceries. Yeah, it's not just right. about groceries, correct. Right. So... What do you mean? Like, okay, sorry. When you said leave me, it implied to me at least that you were saying like leave him, like, and like go to like fucking New Mexico or something. Like, when that's what I just mean leave, like leave the house. Okay, I don't okay. I don't mean like go far, far away. But do you think that's like, do you think it's abusive for him to say like, well, we're married. You can't just take my car. Like, he has a height, he has a career that he needs a car for. Like, obviously, uh, I, I'm just, just gonna... leave and say, I'll be back when I'm back. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that uh, her taking the car and saying, I'll be back when I'm back is, like, necessarily good. But um, in the scenario given, like, I somebody needs space from you, your partner needs space from you, and you're a multimillionaire, get an Uber or something like that. Or literally go buy another car. He could literally go buy another car that hour if he wanted one. He might be able to DoorDash a car if he could, like, there's probably a service that would do it for him. Right? Like, there's different ways to be able to go about it. Obviously, that's not practical, but you know what I'm talking about. I feel like there's where there's a will, there's got to be a way for especially somebody with that much cash and clout. Like, it's... Well, I just, but I, unfair to people with money because, like, just because you have money that could potentially solve a problem a certain way, like, everybody's saying, like, well, why doesn't he have, like, five cars? He has enough money to have it. Okay, well, people make decisions for certain reasons. He may not want to spend, like, I don't know, obviously they've, they've had, we don't know about the car enough to say, like, do they only have one car and they're both good with that or whatever, but like, yeah, just, true. like people say, people say, oh, she didn't want to feed the dog its medicine. Well, they have enough money to hire a maid to feed the dog its medicine and take Correct. the dogs for a walk. Okay, that's true, but that doesn't mean he should do that. I well, mean, uh, the wife of a wealthy man is not just window dressing. She has responsibilities, too, that she should be held accountable for, just like everybody else. Sure, and some of those responsibilities, it seems like, inside of their marriage was, like, possibly, like, feeding the dogs and walking the dogs. I don't necessarily think that there's, like, a, a rule where you only have one car in any kind of traditional relationship I've ever heard of. Like, it makes sense to me inside of a traditional... Yeah, okay, it makes sense to me inside of a traditional relationship that, you know, possibly one of the parties might walk the dog and feed the dog. If I had to generally guess, I would assume it would be the man's responsibility, not as much the woman's responsibility. But 
like usually it is a gendered responsibility some of these various different things so that, like that makes sense but like only having one car that's like I, I agree we can't ascertain why they only have one car but with them only having one car and like this being the stakes i feel like the the most considerate response for your wife you know all things considered is to let her take the car and if you really need it you can get an uber you could get an uber x or whatever the luxury thing or i think it's an x or uber black or whatever um you can you, you know you can fix that problem through a multitude of ways that's part of the reason why that money exists is to make your your life and your wife's life easier and i i think that kind of pertains closer to the idea of like that there it, this is ambiguous right it, it's not that he wasn't abusive it's that we we don't really know right like i, I don't know how you're drawing such a strong claim well, because, I mean, another, I understand we're just going from the video, but, like, if you include the context that he was going in for a major chest surgery a few days after this video was taken, him saying, I think, him saying, so you're just going to take the car and leave me here, it's not even so much about them having one car. I think it's about, like, so you're leaving and you're not, and you're not telling me when you're going to be back a couple complications afterwards. So, like, it was serious. I yeah. Mean, does he not warrant it to show, like, I honestly think he's, like, pleading with her, like, Hillary, don't give up. Like, don't walk out on me now. You're giving birth to our twins soon. I'm going in for surgery. He doesn't say that, but, like... I feel like there's a lot calling... of reading between the lines here. But I just don't see him real. I, I, from what I read from his emotions, I see him being frustrated, but I also see him kind of saying, like... Come on, don't you see what you're doing to me? You're boxing me in. You're just going to leave me here? I don't see him, like, trying to hurt her. And he's continuing to pursue well, the conversation. It, it seems like she's shut down. Okay, it's not about him trying to hurt her. Because my position isn't that, like, he was obviously abusive. My position is that I believe that you're slightly in the wrong for saying that he wasn't abusive. Because you're making another affirmative claim. But you're making an affirmative claim towards that the idea that he wasn't abusive. I, I, I think the claim should, again, be that we just don't know. And I, again, I want to stick to the idea primarily around, um, uh, you know, the watch it, watch it, and the, uh, I'm going to fuck you up. Because it's, I, I really, I don't see a circumstance where anybody can say, I'm going to fuck you up to their wife when they are trying to, like, say that they need space that's like not potentially abusive unless he came out and he said that like i don't know she was like gonna fight him or like had a knife or something um yeah i can say something about that so i understand that most of the time when you say i'm gonna fuck you up it means like i'm gonna physically fuck you up but you can also say it in another context and obviously the, the conversation continued once they entered the house, right? Like, he was continuing to talk to her. So that's a very cherry-picked quote of, I'm gonna fuck you up. They obviously continued talking, and then, first of all, there's never been any physical abuse that's claimed on either side. And secondly, he let her leave. He didn't, he didn't raise, he didn't even stop her. He didn't even try to stop her. He let her leave. So, so, so let's say you're- a physical threat. Let's let's say you're inside of a relationship with somebody that consistently makes I'm not saying this happened, but let's say you're in a relationship with somebody who consistently makes remarks like I'm going to fuck you up, you know, uh, and, and gets really flared up or, or fired up when you we don't even know that he said that we don't know for sure. That's from her. She, she says he says that. Um, There's no evidence of that. I thought there was a, I thought there was. OK. Maybe but I thought there was. I thought there was some. She... I thought it was undisputed. I thought he said that he said that. I thought he admitted yeah, she it. She said. She said by his own admission, he's never admitted it. She said at the end of that video, it's obviously from her because it's only the two of them in that house. So either she's no, no, no. saying he said. I thought he. No, I'm not saying I thought that he had said it and she had heard it. I thought that he had admitted that he said that. Right, but she said that he admitted it. He, he never said it. He, he has never admitted it. She said he admitted it. Can somebody and link the, the uh, if, if they know what I'm talking about, can somebody link it so I can pull it up? I thought he completely independently inside of an interview said, yes, 
or in, inside of some, maybe it was a text or something. I don't remember what it was. I thought he completely independently said, yes, this happened. My Discord now yours. Well, there was a there was a there was a text box at the end of that video, that in where um, somebody claims that Hillary fled the home and that he said, "I'm gonna fuck you up" after they went inside. Now, if he did say that, only two people would know he said that because only two people were there: him and Hillary. So he never said that publicly that he said that. So she, it must be her. She in that video at the end of there says he by his own admission. He may have admitted it or he may not have, but it's completely it's from her there is no public admission has he ever disputed the claim well he says that you know there was a video dropped that's like there was an article dropped that was full of lies i'm pretty sure he did say that but has he publicly disputed that no don't you feel like that would probably be something that you would dispute if it was false well, I mean, that entire article by Yashar Ali, who is a scumbag who has, like, scammed women out of hundreds of thousands of dollars, and, like, she, he lived with Kathy Griffin as her, like, assistant for a couple years, and she felt, like, scared to ask him to leave her own home. He is a classic scumbag journalist, like, the worst of the worst. But that article is full of lies. For instance, he says that she... He says that Steven Crowder chose not to be there for the birth of his twins. That's not true. He was going in for surgery because his lung filled with fluid after the chest surgery. It, it was a complication. He did not choose to not be there for the birth of his twins. That is a complete okay, lie. Okay, my Discord not yours. Uh, that's not what I was asking. It was like it, when it comes to the disputing of the claim, did he not do it? Well, you said, wouldn't well, he dispute that if that's a lie? And the whole article is full of lies, so... Like, That's... you know, I don't know. It's a pretty big lie to say so you chose in the, in the to not entire... be for the birth of your kids. Yeah, and he disputed he that. Disputed... Yeah, he did. No, he, he, he said hasn't... I was. He's... Did he not say I was getting surgery? No. It, well, I mean, he said that in the past when he had surgery, but he hasn't. He hasn't come out and like clarified it since then. People just oh, okay. have put it together. Oh, I thought. I thought at one point he had made a uh, public statement saying that uh, he had done that. My bad. Well, he did, he did say he was going in for surgery when he did, but not recently. He hasn't clarified it, no. Okay. But, I, th I, thought, I thought he had, I thought he had uh, made a public statement that he was in for surgery, and that's the reason why he had done it. I don't believe he has. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Okay. Well, let's, let's assume that he, he didn't make a public statement. I feel like it would be pretty important to be able to address some of these things, you know? Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't think he's addressing them because I think he's still white knighting for his wife or ex-wife. Oh, like. there's fuck no way. What? There's no way you think he's white knighting for his wife. Oh, he absolutely is. She's attacking him publicly and he still says, like, please do not come after Hillary. Wait, you... Okay, um... Publicly attacking him. She's releasing tapes to a scumbag journalist to try uh, to ruin the name of the father of her kids. So, do you think... How do you think it would go if he didn't say these things? Because what I'm seeing is I'm seeing him trying to possibly... Like, it's completely... Like... I'd be willing to break bread on the idea we don't know what he's doing, but almost certainly is he not, like, white knighting for his wife. Because it, in, in my opinion, what we can clearly see is that he is trying to play into the I'm a father, we can still make this work, family dynamic situation. That's what he's trying to do. So when he's saying don't come after my wife, don't come after this, he's possibly doing it. Maybe he genuinely wants to put his family back together, but white knighting implies some level of like um, over charitability or protecting of the other party. And when he says, don't come after my wife, I don't, I don't or uh, Hillary, I don't think he's doing that explicitly to be like, yeah, don't come after my wife. It's more of like playing into that role. And I would, again, I would Maybe be perfectly- He's saying it insincerely? Is that what you're saying? Like he's, he's trying yeah, to play so, the like, noble man role, but he's not uh, saying it sincerely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. After coming, coming after, if I'm a conservative and I talk about how my wife is leaving me, and like going to make our children unhappy and, and like potentially fuck over our children's future. And then I later go, but don't come after my wife. Like, what is that, man? 
come on. Like that's not, you're not white knighting your wife. Like you're, if you wanted to white knight, if he wanted to white knight his wife, he would just be like, I'm confused. I don't know what's happening. I just want Hillary to talk to me. We can work this out. That's what he would do, right? He wouldn't be like, yeah, my wife, yeah, she's, it's her fault. This marriage is coming apart. You guys know how important marriage is to raising kids. Our kids are really important. It's not their fault. It's my wife's. Like it's, it's, it's I feel like it's pretty I mean, obvious how the PR works Can you see it from there. his perspective? They both agreed that they would not do this. They both agreed that they agreed to a Christian marriage till death do us part. She betrayed a court, like from his perspective, she is betraying that promise. So yeah, she yeah. is choosing to do this. Now, proof. I don't think she's choosing to do it. I think she clearly has issues. I don't think she's choosing, and she's just choosing to be malignant. But I do think it's evil to try to bring down the father of your children, to try to destroy his career by leaking stuff and telling lies to a scumbag journalist to try to wreck his career and name. I hey, do hey, think can that's we, can wrong. We st can we start with which statement she's made that's a lie? Okay. Well, it's not quite her, but her family makes a statement. Okay, who is this family? How do we know it's not just her? Somebody should be held to account okay, for making who, these allegations in the family statement. Okay, what did the family statement say that was a lie? They said he cut her off financially. There's no, there's no evidence for that. Hold, they hold say on, he chose on. not whoa, whoa, to whoa, be there for twins. Wait, let, let's start right there, okay? Because lack of evidence doesn't mean the opposite is true so you said that they so you said that their claim was that she got cut off financially wait, 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 but it is a lie he let he he she fled the house according to her own words mm -hmm. right he went and bought a townhouse and let her move back into their old house how is that cutting her off financially he got out of there so she I imagine, could live there so do you have the timeline of when they said that they he cut her off financially it's in the statement yeah, in the in the statement, I believe they they just said that she had got cut off financially. I don't think they gave a specific date. No, they didn't give a specific date. But I mean, how is letting your wife live in the house you guys you bought to live in together? How is letting her live back there and getting yourself a separate place? How is that financial abuse? Uh, it's we just don't how is that know. Cutting it, somebody off financially. We, we don't know. We don't know. Um, it could be that. Um, she had uh, legal dominion over being inside of that house because, like, I think legally she does. I think if Crowder tries to call the police and tell the police, hey, get that my wife out of that property, they just go, no, it's legally her property too. So I don't think even if he was trying to, with all of his best intent, to cut her off financially, I think that she could legally stay in that house, number one. Number two... I agree. I agree. It's both of their property, but he left... For her, he he didn't have to leave either. She couldn't get him out of that house if she wanted to. Okay, but that doesn't this doesn't pertain at all to the argument of like financial abuse, no? Because or financial uh, withholding. Because if he's in the same house, doesn't mean that like he's going to. If he stayed in the house, that doesn't mean that he's not financially abusing her or financially withholding uh of her and then neither they does the opposite the right to, they, but, but they both had the right to stay in that house right that's their common property and he yes. decided okay she doesn't want to be with me i'll get my own place and she can stay in that house well, i mean the, the, i'm just the, saying the, that's the, evidence that there's no he's not cutting no, her off financially there, that is no evidence at all that doesn't pertain to it at all because let's assume a reality where stephen crowder was doing everything in his power to financially cut off his wife he can't prevent her from being in that property he can't do it legally. The cops show up and they're like, hey, this is your wife. She has legal right to be here. And the fact that she's probably that she's pregnant, they probably side with her fast. They'd be like, yeah, dude, you need to fucking chill the fuck out before she makes a domestic violence call. That's probably how that shit would, shit would go. They would. She has absolute legal authority to be on that property. So I don't I don't mm -hmm. know. Agree. So so if that is the case. You cannot use the fact that she was allowed to stay in a house that was both of theirs as evidence that Steven Crowder didn't financially or withhold finances from her because she was legally allowed to be in there even if he was the most malicious person in the world oh, from withholding. I see what you're saying. So yeah, you, what you need to show me is like a pool of money that he said, here, have pregnant wife. That's what you need to show me. 
okay, I do understand what you're saying, but what I'm trying to make, oh, I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that he was generous towards her. Like, there's it, not even, like, did he not cut her off? He said, okay, you don't, like, he has every legal right to be in that house, too, but he said, okay, you don't want to be around me. I'll go get my own place. Well, I'm no, not going to force you to be around not, me. He spent his own money on his own place. That's not even I'm necessarily the case because there, there, there's multiple different things that could go wrong there. One, they could just be bickering endlessly and it could be like his problem as well and just like hey man i want to get some fucking sleep so he went to a separate po place it could have been like he that bought, he bought yeah yeah he, yeah he bought a he bought a house but he couldn't buy a car <laughs> wow but <laughs> anyway like you know he went to a separate place he got that mm. spot and he he tried to to be there you we don't know why it could have been because he just couldn't stand being around her or it could have been because, like, he genuinely was generous towards his, his wife and giving her space and shit like that. That's possible, right? We don't know. Right. So, again, I don't know why you're saying it is evidence that he wasn't financially or withholding finances. I don't, I don't know where you're getting that. There is no evidence of that that I know of. Well, it's a claim that his, that his ex-wife's family makes in this slanderous article to this journalist they also so we don't even know if it's true at all that he cut her off financially but i'm just saying yep. from what i've seen i don't see there being evidence for him cutting her off Co That's correct. What I'm but if there's any group of people that probably have that information would it not be the family of the spouse so why didn't they probably. include it well why the re they? Maybe when but they're they type because they've they in the documentation that I'm sure you read, the the even in the thing that you read, and even if I agree with you that it's slanderous or whatever, they talk about mm. how they're trying to get all of the like legal documentation like ready and stuff like that. Maybe they have some documents that are like um able to show this, but they're still collecting more information or something like that. I don't know, you don't know, we don't know, but the spouse uh, in them know, I don't um whether or not it may or may not exist and with that being the case we can't make an assertion right we can just say hey we don't know if it's a lie because you're claiming it's a lie we don't know if it's a lie right we don't have that info so at least on that we point do you agree it's that it's yes exactly so we're it's a lie. so when you said earlier are... go ahead okay yeah I don't know if it's a lie. I'm just I'm just trying to, I'm just using common sense here and saying there are other lies in the article that are clearly provable. And this is a slan this is a slanderous article and from what I've seen of his character, I don't believe he would w where is the evidence of her being like penniless and on the streets? I don't think he would try to hurt the mother of his children in that way. I do not think so. I I think he's a generous man. I think he didn't realize she was going to do this to him and he didn't think she was going to attack him publicly. He got fucked. Um, so, I, I think that you can say that... So, I, I don't know what exactly you're pointing to when you're talking about this article being slanderous in its entirety and stuff like that. I, I don't want to necessarily defend the article itself, but I do want to, again, talk about the... the so let's say that let's actually make let's make a separate claim instead of me stating what i found to be questionable let's assume mm. everything in the video has no abusive leanings right and okay. of any kind mm -hmm. how are you even able to from there say that he wasn't abusive again you should only be able to say that you don't know whether or not he's abusive If, there, if, if we okay wait i'm trying to understand the hypothetical so if we both say that there's no that he's not being abusive in the video yeah like the, the the video doesn't more specifically that the video doesn't it's like ambiguous we don't know it's just like whatever context because i'm assuming you would agree that there isn't something inside of the video that's a silver bullet that says that steven crowder cannot be abusive like a golden ticket that says he is physically immune to being abusive right Sure, sure. I'm not a okay. Russian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So with that being the case, if we look at the full context of it and are like, just like, hey, none of this is necessarily abusive, how do you get to the position that he isn't abusive? 
Like context can change whether or not something is abusive or isn't abusive. So how do you know with absolute certainty the context does not make it abusive? Well, of course I don't. I I mean you could. I mean, you could say that about anything. You could see you could see a man being super nice to his wife, and you could say, "Well, you don't. How do you know he's not abusive?" True. And I could say, "Well, I don't know he's not abusive." But I bet Destiny five thousand dollars that there would be no evidence that came out that proved that he was an abuser. I just think, based on all of the context and his character, I don't. Of course, I don't know for certain, but. I don't see any evidence of him being abusive. I just don't. Oh, that's great. That should only get you to the point of you don't see any evidence that he is abusive, not that he isn't abusive. Do you understand there's a difference there? That's my, my camp is I see no evidence that damns him as an abuser, right? I see no evidence mm -hmm. that says like this guy is for sure an abuser. You're saying the, I your see no. Logic, you, could ne you could never say that anybody is one thing or the other. You could just say, "Well, I don't know," but I won't call them. Well, so I know what you're talking about. I would say you need a little bit more evidence than a three-minute video. That's what I would say. You need a little bit more evidence than a three-minute video and some dude who smiles and looks pretty for a podcast. I think that's what you need a little bit more of. Right? I don't even agree with Stephen Crowder politically. I think he's okay. kind of a douchebag sometimes, and I don't. You know, I thought he was yeah. funnier earlier, but. I don't even necessarily agree with him. I'm just saying from, yeah, from what I've seen, I would be willing to bet $5,000 that he's a good guy and that he's not an abuser. Sure, I would. that's fine. But that's a, that's a weaker claim even than you know he's not an abuser, right? Because you should be willing to bet your house, right? You should, be, you should be willing to bet your future earnings if you know, because you're making a definite claim. I know he's not an abuser. I don't know. I can make a claim. Right? I actually might go at you on that five thousand dollars. I, I don't want to roll five thousand, maybe five hundred. But like okay. I like listen, but I don't know. Right? I don't know. And I don't I don't think you know either. Getting from the position because you can't get to the position where you know he's not an abuser. I get it. There's nothing for it. Because you need that golden ticket. It's only a three minute video and then you have like his what podcast prove, to go off. What would prove to you that he's not an abuser? Um, what probably would you say he's not an abuser. Probably a pretty consistent, uh, uh, um, some text messages that show that the context of this conversation was extremely unorthodox, once in a um, blue moon kind of a thing. Typically, he's very consistent with his emotion, his demeanor being very uh, calm and understanding. Um, his and this from multiple different people as well who are extremely close to him and know his inner uh how he works like as a person um even some potentially people that like were around him and then maybe grew apart from him uh more leaked footage uh, maybe some legal documents that show that he stuck his neck out for his uh wife inside of critical argument times like matching up uh the dates of certain text messages big arguments with him sticking his neck out financially and emotionally for his wife. Things like that is what I would need to be able to do it. I am never, I, th I want to reserve the term and the idea of being an abuser for extremely serious circumstances and use it very cautiously. And so I am never going to say this person isn't an abuser or is either based on a three minute video. That's almost never gonna happen unless somebody's like stabbing another person. And even still, like maybe it's in self-defense or something like that, right? Like I don't I don't wanna have like a, I don't know, a crazy situation in my hands. Well, here's a question for you. What about his wife? I would say she is displaying signs of abuse. Uh, do you agree that he is displaying signs of abuse? No. Okay, then no, I don't agree. Okay, well, I would say he's genuinely coming at the conversation from a frustrated place. Um, granted, but you can be frustrated. That's not abusive at all to be frustrated. She's shutting down the conversation. Let me, let me, let me, let me, here's what I, here's what I ask people. If this was flipped around and it was him saying to her, Hillary, Hillary, and she was going in for chest surgery, right? Let's just say, and he said to her, Hillary, Hillary, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. No, I'm leaving. I'm leaving and I'll be back when I'm back. Everybody would say, well, that's abusive. If you just I, I, I think her I, name, uh, talking down to her. I, I think you might, yeah, I think you might, I think you might have some lefties that, that absolutely agree with, agree with that. But, um, 
I'm not one of them. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to say is that the public's opinion on that isn't relevant to me because I don't view that the same way, even though I might agree with you. I think if I had a partner and I was saying, you know, I'm going to take the car and I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, do this and, and I'm going to do that. I, I think a lot of people might consider that in that way. That's not relevant to our conversation. What's relevant to our conversation is what happened and like... Uh, not like necessarily the public's hypocrisy because if we agree on this then it's just between me and you and what we think actually happened so from your point of view sure then, sure i agree the, but the court mm -hmm. of public opinion is like i mean that's what got oj's released so whatever like it's yeah like, we can we can agree. the bandwagon fallacy is a fallacy for a reason yeah I agree. for sure but that's you know we're talking about whether or not somebody is an abuser not whether or not he's perceived as one right um or, or could be perceived as one. What would it take for you to believe that Steven Crowder was abusive in that video? Hmm. Well, I have seen abusive behavior firsthand. I would say purposefully trying to hurt somebody without the intention, you know, without the intention of helping, trying to just trying to put somebody down to feel better about yourself. Um, let me see. I mean, there's, there's, there's like this, this classic abuse, gaslighting, gaslighting, I would say. I mean, that's tricky, that's tricky to determine, but th there can be genuine gaslighting. Like, if she said something and then he said, you didn't say that. You didn't say that. And it trick her and, like, make her think reality. I would say that's abuse. I would, you know, those are some things I would say that would be abusive. Okay, uh, I guess... I mean, we're talking about emotional abuse here. I mean, nobody's... Like, I, so you know, obviously, let, physical abuse is a certain thing, but that's not even... In, we're not even that ballpark. So let's say that the um, I, I'm gonna fuck you up comment came while, like, at the very end of the video and with... in the context of that video. Like, mm -hmm. it was on... caught on the camera... And it mm -hmm. was just at the very end of it. Would that be abusive? Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily, because I understand you could say mental gymnastics, but just hear me out. So if if she's saying, like, I'm leaving, I'll be back when I'm back, I'm asserting control, I'm leaving you before you're having surgery, and I'm calling you an abuser, I think he could say, like, okay, you're going to threaten me, I'm threatening you. You're threatening me, you're saying, like, I'm leaving, and you're an abuser, and he was right to suspect that she was going to divorce him because she did, then I could understand him saying, I'll fuck you up for doing this because we made an agreement. I don't think he's saying physically. I don't think, I think we can rule that out. Obviously, he's not a physically abusive person, but well, I think you can say... Somebody who, was, who hasn't had a history of physical abuse absolutely can consistently threaten physical abuse. That's not unheard of. I mean, it's actually rather like well understood that that's a thing that people do. They like threaten. I don't, I, Good. Well, I, I just, I, I don't, I, I just, I just don't see that from him. I understand that you can try to control somebody by physically threatening them, but I don't see any indication that she's physically afraid of him. She walks closer to him. She walks right by him. He doesn't touch her. She doesn't act like you know, like she's not hand shy or anything. Like, and I know he didn't. You know, but I just, I, I've seen people who are at least acting like they're afraid of somebody. She does not act like that. She's not afraid of him physically. If he had been physically threatening her, she would be like... Even oh, okay, if, I'm even scared. if I grant that she isn't physically afraid of him, she could be, do you agree that there's an idea of like emotional abuse that could be present inside of that dynamic? Like, I'm going to fuck you up. Like, to what end is he saying, I'm going to fuck you up to his wife? If, if you're gonna threaten me and leave me, then I'll fuck you up. I'll fuck you up in court. I'll fuck you up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whatever. I Not don't. Physically, but... No, no, no. I don't think that court was on his mind there. Like, I think we could reasonably say that he's not like saying I'm gonna fuck you up in the court of public opinion there. Like, you know, I, I feel like his whole in the court of public opinion. Uh, uh, sorry, I was kind Maybe, of it's kind of yeah, a dank me yeah. for chat, but like inside oh, of court. Okay. Like, I don't think that's the idea that she had uh, in her mind, right? Like, and even if I do grant that that was the case, I would say, like, at bare minimum, 
then that would be like mutually abusive. And then he's still abusive. Like if what you're saying is when she was doing all of that shit, what she was saying is, I'm gonna fucking divorce you. I'm gonna be like, try and fucking paint you as the worst person in the world in, in public. And from your perspective, like in, in your mind, you know, he isn't in, in shit like that. I'm gonna mm-hmm. do all of this stuff. That would be abusive, right? But his response of, I'm gonna fuck you up with as little information as he had is also abusive. Because you can't just go like, hey, she's saying that like, um, what is it? Like, uh, this is abusive. Uh, I, I don't wanna have to do this shit. I need space. And then his mm-hmm. response, I'm gonna fuck you up, be like, oh, well, he's fine, and she, but she's in the wrong. That doesn't make sense to me. I would feel like they would just well, both be in the wrong. Um, you know, I'm not saying he's perfect in any way. Maybe he got frustrated. I'm sure if he did say that, that he regrets saying that because, you know, I'm sure he doesn't like swearing at his wife, and I'm sure he would regret saying something like that. But the question is... The question is whether that you, whether you think that a woman can say, I love you, I'm committed to you, but I need some space, and have it be manipulative, or whether it's sincere. I think it's clearly manipulative in this case. I don't think she's necessarily means to do this, but she is not respecting him as a partner. She's saying, I I'm leaving. So let me, let me make a little bit stronger claims now. Consistently okay. throughout this conversation, you have attributed intentions to the wife. All right, and I felt and I felt like what we were doing and what we had agreed on pretty distinctly was that we don't know these people's intentions because we don't have the context for their relationship. So it feels really weird when you're attributing especially negative or malicious intentions to the wife, but you refuse vehemently to do so to Steven Crowder. And it comes what? off in negative yeah. intention. Well, I'm not saying negative intent. When, when did I say? I just said I don't think she knows what she's doing. I'm not saying she's choosing to do this to hurt him. Did you not say that she was manipulating, manipulative when she... Did you not say it was, like, manipulative and malicious to frame him as an abuser? And that, from Crowder's perspective, it was justified for him to say that he would fuck her up because even from Crowder's perspective... In that moment, he would know, that, armed with the knowledge that she was going to, like, go out into the world and, like, make a whole public mess when she said you're being abusive? I'm saying he knew she was going to do that. I'm just saying even if she's, even if he just thinks that she's leaving him four days before his surgery and that she's starting to call him an abuser... I leave can, leave I him really for, for, like, just a minute to get some air. For like maybe no, maybe she a couple said, hours. Back when I'm back. Yeah, I but think th- th- she, th- meant, she uh, meant I'm leaving. No, no. She when you say I'm leaving, he- I feel like the only context that like that would actually matter to this argument is if she was leaving to New Mexico. If she needs to leave for a couple hours to get some air, the I'm gonna fuck you up comment shouldn't even that shouldn't even be in the conversation. But it doesn't make sense if she's only leaving for a couple of hours because then he says, I can't. I can't be with my friends. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents' house. For a couple house. of he hours. Can't, he can't do all that stuff in a couple of hours. There's, He says, I can't be home. You're going to leave me here. It doesn't make sense if it's just a couple of hours. Well, he's saying he can't do any one of those things is what you can't do. Mm, you're saying he's just writing off a list of things that yeah, he might do while very, she's gone. Yeah, very, very common. Like if I take the keys to a, a car or something like that. Oh, I, I, feel could like see that. I, could, I could see it either way. I could see it. I could see that. I could see that. I, but I'm not. I, I disagree with you. I'm not. Con- I'm saying you can be manipulative without realizing that you're being manipulative. I'm not saying that she's like an evil person and he's the, uh, he's Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that. Um. So what? You you think she's I'm not just attributing manip- intention to her? So you just th- you think that she's being manipulative unintentionally? Yes. Okay. I think she's freaking out about the situation, and she is hurting him, and it is wrong for her to do that, but she doesn't realize what she's doing, and she's freaking out, and she sees no, no other option. And Again, I have a lot of sympathy for that. Even if I were to agree with that, that still doesn't bring us to the conclusion that he isn't abusive. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Maybe it's because I'm late, but I just feel like we keep going around in circles, because yeah, well, even if you... Even yeah, if you yeah. say he's... you, So you say... that. 
I say, what about her behavior? You say, that doesn't prove he's not abusive. I say, but okay, considering her behavior and his responses, I don't see any abuse. I don't see him abusing her, meaning abuse, using her, using his relationship with her wrongly in a way that is not fitting to the relationship. I do not see any evidence of that. So even so, no matter the context, the the actions depicted inside of the video cannot be abusive in your mind. No matter the context, no, the context matters. But the context only, even if I didn't know the context. Well, you don't know the context I, for the vast majority of it. No, nobody does. It's not public. Well, with the context, I know. But I, you know, there's there is. There's some evidence of time, like a timeline of stuff that happened. But even if I didn't know that, when I first watched the video, I didn't even know Steven Crowder. And I remember thinking, I, I saw it and I heard it and I was like, oh, I see. This is a guy who is like, he's frustrated in a masculine way, but it's, it's, he's not abusive. But I was just like, I can smell it. People are going to call this abusive. I had no idea it was him. And I actually had a hard time believing it was him because I was like, oh, I didn't realize he could be like, you know, a man. I kind of thought he would be like, you know, like a fake man, like most conservative men. You know what I mean? But like, I was like, this sure. doesn't sound abusive. This sounds like he's, it's like one of the rare times that I've heard a man hold a woman to account and she's just shutting down and saying, I'm not dealing with it. So I, I as soon as I heard it, I was like, I don't hear abuse. I don't hear him miss. I don't hear him using his relationship with this woman in a way that is wrong or disrespectful to her. Yeah. I just don't hear it. And then so because you don't have, like, because it's, uh, again, I, I, I would really implore you to look into how you're analyzing this because you're making another claim of uh, he wasn't abusive. It would, yeah, I, I feel like you're making the same mistake, but on the opposite side where you're you're making a, you're stating this the guy is not abusive when you just don't have the evidence for that you don't know like the context that you have is not sufficient to you i don't have the evidence for that all i all i have is i i do not have the abs i don't know the history of their life and i've seen every well it's not even about every argument i think realistically we could find evidence pretty easily that could show mm. some kind of uh, abuse I don't, I don't think that it would take a crazy amount. Like, if he has a pattern of behavior of saying, I'm going to fuck you up and having her, like, need to leave the house. Or if he has a history of saying, watch it, watch her, and implying certain things like that, and then her getting extreme emotional distress, or maybe she has, like, PTSD or something like that from that, and then there's text messages that show something of the sort or anything like that. I feel like there's a lot of scenarios where in which... You, he could uh he could potentially come off as abusive there or her i'm willing to like i'm willing to sort of i don't know everything i'm just saying from what i've seen and the con like even even at first i was like well i'm not sure what's going on here but the more i learn about it the more that i just think that Hillary is overwhelmed and lashing out and that Steven is a good man. I I just have to say that. I, I just don't see how that's not true. But I understand something could come out and I'm completely wrong. I just would be absolutely you can, surprised. So again, you can believe that, but that still doesn't prove that he wasn't abusive in that situation. That still doesn't prove that he was not. It just what in you would In their relationship, I can't prove it. No, I cannot no, prove even, it. No, even in that video. Well, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I maybe maybe I'm just tired, but we keep circling. Yeah, it no, back no, no. Yeah, because yeah, I'll wrap. I think we should wrap this up and be done with this. Right I now. no, honestly, I do. I do like it, it's it's. I wasn't coming into this with like you know. I I, be I barely really know you, so like. But I was I just happened to come on and hash it out because apparently I'm having a debate about this on Sunday um, against Destiny and uh, Not So Erudite with me and my dad as uh, debate partners. So that'll be interesting. I appreciate hashing it out with somebody who, I mean, you seem fairly neutral. And I understand yep. it's like, whatever, a weird or like, 
I don't think a lot of people have my take. I'm not trying to be like an edgelord. I really do believe it's true, but like, I understand that you're not even like really saying he's abusive. You're just saying it's neutral. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know if he is. We don't know if she is. We don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I, I get it. We keep circling back and maybe I do need to work on my argument because I think I need to make it clear that he is not abusive in that video, but I'm not, you know, I'm just a little bit tired, so. Yeah, yeah, I, if, if you're gonna have a conversation with Destiny and Not So Erudite, I, I mm -hmm. personally, I don't think uh, the statement that you believe he's a good man is gonna do much for you in that in that conversation. So I, I would arm yourself with some some other things there for that as well. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's mostly, it's, it's mostly, a, I don't know what you would call it. It's not like a logical argument. It's just sort of an emotional argument. Like, I just think, you know, from yeah, his character you're... and his personality, I just don't see the abusiveness. I don't. I see frustration. I see masculinity. Yeah, but, but when you're when you're making this point, you're making a like a deductive point. So when if you if you say you're making an emotional argument, I don't think anybody can like take that away from you. But you're using an emotional point to get to a like a logical deductive end, and that's where like the the issues come. Like if I said it'd be like if I said the. Um, I don't know. Uh, Donald Trump was right about the election being rigged, and then somebody says, like, well, why? And I said, well, I don't know. I think Donald Trump is a good guy, and I don't think he'd lie. You know? I'm using an emotional point to bolster, like, a claim about that. But, okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Energy. All right. I just, it's like 2 a.m. over here. I don't know what time it is for you. Is it 2 a.m. for you? It's like 11. Oh, yeah. okay. Where do you live? I mean, uh, I live with Darius, Arizona. Oh, Arizona. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks well, for thanks talking. Thanks for having me on. That was fun. Bye. All right, bye. All right. We're done. I'm ending stream. That lasted way longer than I thought it would. Holy shit. I was supposed, we were supposed to go to the, oh my God, dude. I literally did the thing, boys. I did the fucking thing. I have a, I have a girl over and she's just sitting there on the fucking bed, like doing her own fucking shit, dude. I did the thing, but instead of playing video games, I'm fucking debating another woman, dude. Holy shit. Oh my God, this is so cringe. Good Lord, man. Oh my God. Uh, uh, uh. Dude, and we can't even go out and buy a fucking different shit for the goddamn computer, man. Cringe. Maybe this says something? I don't know. Alright, you guys have a good rest of your day. I'm gonna be off. I'm gonna be done. It was a good stream. Much love. Um, talk to you guys later, yeah?